I, I guess it goes back to uh, so there's my family saying, you know, you can always help somebody, and mm-hmm. and and my um, enthusiasm for helping women be treated as equals um, is sort of knows no bounds. Uh, mm-hmm. I always th- thought that um, that society as a whole is better off, and um, and if everybody can contribute. There's a whole pool of talent there. And um, and when I grew up in the place I grew up, there were lots of people who didn't think that girls even needed to be educated, you know, because they'll get married and all of that. And, and there weren't a lot of um, uh, ideas that you'd go on to do anything anyway. Um, so I, after, after I became president of Richmond, it was the first year and the uh, state government asked me to uh, chair a an inquiry into mm-hmm. women and girls in sport and recreation. Yeah, and um, so I thought, oh well, I got some time in the off season. <laughs> I'll help with this. Uh, so it was a year long review, and it was uh, we went around the state. We talked to all sorts of organizations and sport sporting organizations um, to young women to uh, administrators. And we wanted to look at participation and leadership. Uh, some in the past, some reviews had looked just at leadership. Some had just looked at how can we get more women and girls playing sport. But this was to look at both and to come up with some recommendations. And because um, c- there had been so much work done in the past, but nothing ever happened with it. It just was a report. And um, so we thought if we keep it sharp and have a few recommendations, it's more likely. And so we had nine. And um, and the the state government, uh, John Aaron was the uh, minister for sport and rec at the time, accepted all nine and then put a million dollars into a year-long implementation planning and then rolled it out. Um, but one of the things that we recommended, which was quite, you know, I guess, dramatic or progressive at the time, Mm -hmm. was that um, every sporting organization board, if they wanted money from the state government, had to get 40% women on the board in three years. And there was a lot of, oh, you know, we can't do that, we can't do that. It's like, well, if you don't want any state money, that's okay. (laughs) Um, And then about year two, I started seeing little uh, ads pop up uh, online or somewhere about... Um, women who might want to join sporting boards come this weekend. We've got some, and I thought, oh, okay, so they're getting things in order. And um, and lo and behold, it happened. And okay. yeah, and so you think was that another thing that was recommended was a lot of duplication of effort between health and sport and education that we needed a central office. Mm-hmm. And so um, Victoria was the first stayed in the country and might still be uh, the only that set up an office of women and girls in sport and started a change our game um, campaign to uh, keep the momentum going. So that was really a rewarding sort of thing. I didn't know when I started. And again, I'm thinking, I know how to run a meeting. I know how to write a report. I don't know anything about state sporting organizations, but it was a great um, committee that was put together, and um, it had people who were athletes, people who had been administrators, people who were academics. There were nine of us, people from around the state, and it was a really great experience. So I did that. Um, then there's uh, a group called the Minerva Network that's been started for um, uh introducing uh, professional sports women to business people to help them with their career after sport and what happens. And so I was the uh, inaugural co-chair for Victoria. And so we set that up. It started in New South Wales and Queensland and then came to Victoria. And again, that was about helping people um, identify and realize what they wanted to do after sport. 